At one time or another, most of us have probably heard at least one sermon preached on the famous verse of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. This well-known verse says that we are supposed to give thanks in all things. It's a tough pill to swallow for many people, not because the instruction itself is difficult, but rather because our interpretation of it makes it harder than it actually is. You see, what I was taught long ago, and what many people still believe today, is that this famous verse says that we must give thanks for all things, when in fact it doesn't say that at all. And what I want to share with you today is what this verse actually is saying and why this in itself is a testament to Jesus Christ and your relationship with him. Welcome to Thriving Branch. I'm Jim. Here in the United States, we are about to celebrate Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day is tomorrow at the time of recording this video. And it's a time when we usually give thanks for the things in our lives, for the blessings God has given to us. And it seemed appropriate at this time to talk about what the scriptures actually say regarding giving thanks and how we can give thanks honestly in Jesus Christ. Now, as I've mentioned, most people, including myself in earlier years, were trained and taught that this verse of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, is telling us to give thanks for all things. And that's difficult. It's difficult to give thanks for all things. Some would even say impossible. But as we read this verse today, I want you to read it with open eyes and a fresh perspective to see what the scripture is actually saying apart from man's ideas and man-made doctrines. So I want us to read this verse now in the context of the surrounding verses. So let's begin today by reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. And as we do this, you're going to see something very interesting. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Ready? One, two, read. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesyings. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Examining these verses, we can see right away that verses 16 and 17 also contain some instructions that seem rather extreme and difficult. We see rejoice evermore, meaning at all times or always, and pray without ceasing meaning without stopping or constantly. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to our main verse about giving thanks always yet, and already we've hit a wall regarding our behaviors, <laughs> or so it appears to anyone who does not understand what these terms mean. We're going to be looking at that today. I've spoken with a person who told me that he really doesn't enjoy prayer 
because it's so inconvenient to get into an appropriate prayer posture or find a secluded area to pray in daily life. To him, prayer was more of a ritual with carefully crafted rules, guided behaviors. To him, that's what prayer was rather than what it actually is. And that may seem strange as I describe it to you now, but you may be surprised how many people actually hold the same view of prayer secretly in their heart, even if they won't admit it openly. In reality, prayer is nothing so formal or complicated. Prayer is simply communication with God. You talk to God about anything or any subject. He responds. It's that simple. We have in large part turned prayer into something magical or mystical. We have made it more about form and ritual than function and relationship. We have stripped it of its essence. And it's the same for everything that we read in these verses. Take, for example, verse 16. Verse 16 that we read, Rejoice evermore or always. What does it actually mean to rejoice? Do we even really know what rejoicing is? As it turns out, the simple Greek definition for the word rejoice used in verse 16 here is to be glad and to thrive. Hopefully you know what thriving is because it's part of the name of these Bible studies, but that realization alone may have just opened up your entire world. The real definition of rejoicing is to be glad and to thrive. Because rather than seeing this verse as giving you an impossible task to fulfill, you can now look at it with fresh new lenses in Christ and see that indeed, in Christ Jesus today, you already have great reasons to be glad. According to Psalms chapter 32, verses 10 and 11, and he always causes you to thrive in him. According to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, and 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. And of course, the well-known Psalm 23 testifies to both of these facts as well. So as you're beginning to see, our common idea and interpretation of these things being spoken of here in these verses of 1 Thessalonians 5 isn't really what these things are actually speaking of. What we commonly believe to be these things are not actually these things. We have made these things much more complicated and convoluted than God actually intended. God wants us to simply trust and rest in Him. And we are twisting and turning the whole thing around into some kind of work of ourselves. And we're struggling and striving instead of resting and thriving. And this now brings us to our main verse today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Let's read it again with fresh eyes and fresh understanding. In everything... Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, as I've already mentioned twice today, most people, upon hearing this verse, instinctively think it to mean that we should give thanks and be thankful for all things. I've seen people desperately confused and struggling trying to thank God for great tragedies and sicknesses and all manner of evil being done. And these precious people, because they have been misinformed, mistaught, and in some cases flat out taken advantage of, they somehow think 
that all of the evil being done and all of the sickness ravaging their body or the body of their loved one is somehow the will of God and that they should be thankful for it. I've seen a lot of people have that idea. I need to be thankful for this cancer because God works in mysterious ways and I don't understand it. So I thank God for this cancer or I thank God for this tragedy or I thank God for this disease. A lot of people have been so confused they think they need to be thankful for the evil that is being done. And I'm here today to tell you, my friend, my dear friend, nothing could be further from the truth. This lie is from the very pit of hell itself. That all of the evil upon the world, all of this sickness, is somehow the will of God and we should just consent to it and accept it, even be thankful for it. That lie is deadly and disgusting. I have went to pray for people who have told me they didn't want to be healed. They have a disease eating their body away, sapping their strength, and they didn't want to be healed because they were trying to be thankful for it. They saw it as a tool that God was using to teach them something or to make them more holy or to use them for some kind of grand purpose. And I informed them that Jesus' sacrifice was more than sufficient to make them holy. Jesus' sacrifice was more than sufficient to make them righteous. Jesus' sacrifice was more than sufficient and that they wouldn't learn anything by letting the disease kill them. I then proceeded to show them that God himself calls sickness and disease curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And in verse 22, he states the singular purpose of sickness and disease. It's not to improve you in any way or to teach you lessons, but the purpose of sickness and disease mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 22, is to pursue you until you perish. That is the purpose of sickness and disease. And in our modern culture today, we are very sickness conscious, very sickness aware. But these things are not tools for God to use to improve your life or to bring you closer to him. Sickness and disease are enemies. They are curses which Jesus suffered and died to free you from, as Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 makes clear. It's important that you see that, and we're going to be doing more studies on that in the future. But for now, returning to our verses in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, specifically verse 18, and the recounting of my tale about the precious people that I've talked to who were thanking God for their curses instead of standing against them and resisting them in Jesus Christ, I want to draw your attention to a simple fact regarding 1 Thessalonians 5.18. The verse simply does not say, be thankful for all things. If you learn only one thing from this study, I want you to learn this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, simply does not say, be thankful for all things. Nope. Doesn't say that. Instead, it says, in everything, 
give thanks. Do you see the difference? This, just as with the other verses, should be a real eye-opener, because it has been completely misunderstood by many, misquoted by many. This verse is not telling you to be thankful for every manner of evil that comes into your life. It doesn't say just roll over and accept it and be happy for it. No, not at all. What it is saying is that in everything, in every circumstance, even as you're going through it, you can still give thanks. Not for the evil, but because you have a God who has already guaranteed you the victory over whatever it is you're facing in that moment. That's a world of difference. And this perspective shift will change your life if you simply let it. The very next verse says to not quench the spirit. And I find it extremely interesting that this verse immediately follows the one speaking about giving thanks in all things. Because the moment somebody accepts a curse into their life, or assumes that it's God's will for them to be cursed, even after Jesus paid to free them, then the Spirit has already begun to be quenched. Do you see? I assure you I have grace to say that, because I have seen a lot of people's lives destroyed because they accepted their situation, instead of standing against it in faith in Christ. Dear people whom Jesus died for, who have been lied to and accepted the lie instead of the truth. And again, I'm here today to tell you that needs to stop. This is exactly why verses 20 and 21 are in your Bible. Because I know I've stepped on a few religious toes today because of what I'm saying. And there are a lot of people who grew up and all their lives have believed a certain way. And what I've shown today is challenging that perception. It's challenging that religious tradition. If you find yourself in that situation today, don't despise it. Because if you test it, if you check it, if you pray about it, if you ask God about what I'm saying, the Holy Spirit will testify about everything that I've said. Because God himself wants you to be made free with the truth of Jesus Christ. He doesn't even want one more person to be held bondage for another day with the deception of religion. But he wants everyone to be free in his son. I encourage you today, you can live a true life of honest thankfulness. Not rolling over and offering false thankfulness for curses which are not from God, but true thankfulness because you know that Jesus has made you an overcomer and given you the victory, both in this life and into eternity. So I tell you today, have a happy Thanksgiving. And even if you're in a part of the world that doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving, you can have true thankfulness every single day because of Christ. Be blessed.